All right, students. I'm on my fourth or fifth try for making this video. In my mind, it should have been very easy to make, but in reality, it's been a lot harder. But I did find out that my daughter, Hannah, is fairly ingenious with what she came up with. All right, so on your assignment sheet, remember that you need to read that first of all. The very first thing you do is you go look at your assignment sheet. Now remember, some of you didn't do the reading assignment for Tuesday satellite work, so you need to start reading with page one to be able to fill out these notes. Okay, and then you'll finish up by, you'll read page one through page 10, and you're gonna do the notes on uh, week one, day one, right here is where it says week one, day one. And then on here, it says week one, day two. So you're gonna do both of these sections. All right, you must make sure that you read all the instructions right here because this is really important. Right here, it says, remember taking notes are a way to help you learn the new information you will read. So we're working on learning by gathering information from what we read. There's no right answer. Please remember that. Don't be afraid of getting this wrong. The only way that you can get it wrong is if one, you don't write anything and that would make me very unhappy. Or two, if you write about something that doesn't have to do at all with the reading. As long as you're writing about what you read about, you're not gonna miss it, okay? And so there's no right answer. This is important here. Write your notes in your own words. Your own words by responding to the prompt given. Okay, so right here it told you to read page one through page five. Now, it's telling you the section to read here that'll be found on page one through page five. I just wanna make a, an explanation of this, ancient times up to 600 BC. Now you'll remember a lot of you were in fifth grade history with me and we talked about the terms BC and AD. Remember BC means the time before Christ. Jesus Christ was so important that he split history in half or into two pieces. There's the part that came before his birth, that's BC. And so this is talking about the ancient times, thousands of years ago, up to 600 years before the birth of Christ. So this right here would be in the time of the Old Testament. That subsection of the chapter is talking about Old Testament times, the times before Jesus was born. If it ever says right here, A.D., Remember that that means Anno Domini. It means in the year of our Lord. So when you see A.D., it's talking about the time of history after the birth of Christ. A.D. does not mean after death. It means Anno Domini, which means in the year of our Lord. All right, so you already did this first thing. You did this for today. Uh, where you wrote the two definitions, the definition of science and papyrus. So you can go ahead and mark that off. And then it tells you to write a sentence or two summarizing what you learned in each section under the appropriate section heading. Then you're gonna answer the on your own question for 1.1. And it says, begin your history of science timeline. I want you to mark that out. We are not going to do that yet, okay? And when you've done that, then you can very satisfyingly come back here and check that off that you finished that. All right, so let's take a look at the notes for pages one through five. Now I had filled these out and then I realized you guys probably don't read cursive. If you did 
fifth grade with me, you probably do because you know I wrote in cursive all the time. But So I came back and I did this in print. Okay. Now, I didn't write the definition of science in papyrus because you've already done that. And these will be copied word for word from the book. If you have not done this in your book or on the hard copy I gave you in class today, you need to put those definitions there. Okay, on this section right here, remember you always read the instructions. So it says, in the spaces provided, write a sentence or two summarizing what you learned as you read each of the sections. While you could copy the materials in the textbook, it is better if you put what you learned into your own words. That might be intimidating to you at first. You'll get much better at it. Fifth graders, when you did, you're not fifth graders, you're seventh graders. Seventh graders, those of you that did fifth grade English with me, when we read our novels, you summarized every chapter, okay? I'm sure you did that last year in Mrs. Chapman's class. Or if you were in another school, I'm sure you practiced summarizing. So the important thing is that you take the information and you put it into your own words. All right, so first we read the introduction and that's where we found out what science was. And I thought the first thing that was really interesting is that the term science comes from Latin and it means knowledge. So that's what I wrote right there. The term, and I had to go back and put the to make this a complete sentence. The term science is Latin that means knowledge. Okay, It's going to do you well if you remember how to write a complete sentence. It starts with a capital letter and it ends with the correct end mark. Okay, And then in the introduction, I thought it was saying that people are born curious and they spend their lives trying to figure out the answer to their why questions. You know, we're all born scientists because we all wonder, why did that happen? And we spend our time trying to come up with a reason for why. All right, let's go on to the next section. I'm gonna move these two things here so I don't mark them. Knock them off my desk. Okay, the next section says the earliest science, uh, ancient times up to 600 years before the birth of Christ. This is specifically talking about the things that we learned about Egypt. Okay. Um, first of all, I think it's really important. I think it made a really good point that we learn from the past. That's part of the reason why we study history. It's important that we keep good historical records so we can learn from the lessons of the past where we keep doing the things that work or we build upon the things that worked or we remember the lessons of the things that didn't work. Okay. The next thing is, I wrote, the first scientific records are from about 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. I think that's really interesting. And then I wrote, healers of the time used trial and error. Oh, I'll try this. Oh, I'm sorry. That hurt you worse or killed you. I won't do that again. And then we read about Mr. Imhotep. Remember, Imhotep was known as a healer. People came from all over Egypt and all over the area to be treated by him. And I think this is important that we remember, and I put a star by it. I always put stars by things that are really important, okay? Healers in this time began to keep records on papyrus. If something worked, they wrote it down on their papyrus. If something didn't work, they'd write it down on their papyrus so they wouldn't waste any more time with it. And remember, they could share their papyrus scrolls with other people so they could pass their knowledge along. That's really, really important. 
Okay, so then we're going to go to the other cultures. The two other cultures mentioned were Mesopotamia and China. And if you'll think back to fifth grade history, we studied both of those civilizations, ancient Mesopotamia and ancient China. And you'll remember we started out fifth grade history learning about ancient Mesopotamia. That's the area around Iraq, the modern company country of Iraq and um, we learned that that was the cradle of civilization so it's not crazy that we're going back and thinking about something important an important invention from that place and that time okay so the Mesopotamians had a really important invention and that was the wheel it revolutionized the world it changed the way the, the world got around, changed, changed transportation, but not just transportation. Okay, so yes, they used those wheels on chariots and wagons and carts and things like that, but they also used that wheel to make a potter's wheel. And that now that they could make things out of pottery, they could make vessels that they could store medicines in, they could store food in it, they could store papyrus scrolls in it, um, they could make mortars and pestles for grinding, grinding medicines, they could make cookware and dinnerware, they could make all kinds of stuff with their potter's wheel. Okay, and then we go on to China. Now remember, Mesopotamia as a civilization came first in history before the ancient Chinese civilization. Or, pardon me, but there could have been people there, but we studied it in fifth grade before here. Now remember, the reason why I'm saying that this came before this is because Remember, this is the location of the Tigris and the Euphrates River, and those are the two of the boundary rivers for the Garden of Eden, where the first two people lived. So that's why I say this civilization probably was thriving before this one was, okay? But remember the Chinese civilization, they came up with their fair share of really revolutionary inventions. They invented gunpowder. They invented fireworks. They invented the printing press. Not the movable type printing press that we talked about during the Middle Ages, but the printing press was a revolution. But um, they didn't have it in ancient Egypt, so they had to write on papyrus. Okay, But one thing that the Chinese did come up with, and they come at, came up with compasses, C-O-M-P-A-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E -S, and those compasses helped to determine direction north, south, east, and west, and when they could figure that out easily, then that helped them with navigation, and if they, navigation means it just helped them to find their way back, uh, find their way around. Okay, so they could go out on trading expeditions and they would be able to find their way back home. And as they traded, they could share their knowledge. Okay, and that's a really important thing in history. Okay, so let's go to the next page. And that's up here. Every module section is going to end with an on your own question. There might be two on your own questions. There might be three. There won't be 10. There will only be a few. This one just has one. And so this question says, although the ancient Egyptians had reasonably advanced medical practices for their times, and although there were many inventions that revolutionized life in the ancient world, most historians of science do not think of Egyptian doctors as scientists. Why? Well, hint... They want you to look at the entire definition of science. So if we go back and we look at the definition of science, let's see if I can find my page where I had the definition of science. Here we go. 
Science is the systematic study of the natural world through observation and experimentation. Did they do this? Yes, they did. They used trial and error. That's a form of experimentation and observation. Okay? And then they wrote down what they discovered, but they stopped there. Okay? because they didn't use it to formulate their general laws because they didn't know why the moldy bread worked. They didn't understand that the mold had the chemical penicillin in it. They didn't understand why the seeds from the poppy made people feel better because they didn't understand that it had the chemicals morphine and codeine in those seeds. Okay, They didn't know that germs existed at this point. They didn't know about the microscopic world. So they didn't have enough knowledge to be formulating their general laws or formulating their explanations. Okay, So let's go back to here. And I wrote, they used trial and error to find treatments that worked, but they I should have said didn't. Okay, they used trial and error to find treatments that worked, but they didn't know why they worked. They didn't formulate explanations. Okay? Now, this portion down at the bottom of the page is all about timelines. You can just do this for right now. Okay, don't scratch over it, just a nice neat X. You don't have to think about that right now. Okay? All right, so that's pages 21, 22, and 23. Once you've done that, you can come back here and you can check off day one. Okay? Now, let's go to day two. We're on week one, day two. All right, so up here it says we're going to read pages 5 through 10 in the text. As you read, complete the tasks on the chart or on the checklist and check them off as you complete them. First of all, it says to use the graphic organizer to take notes on the scientist you will learn about in the section that you're assigned to read, which is True Science Begins to Emerge. 600 years before the birth of Christ up to 500 years after the birth of Christ. You're going to read the subsections called three Greek scientists and then two more Greek scientists and you're going to read the section about the hypothesis. Okay? You're also going to be reading through experiment 1.1. It says you will conduct it tomorrow as in Friday. You are not going to be conducting it on Friday. I don't think we'll be ready to do that. As I study tomorrow, I may, I may say, oh, yeah, we can do that. But I don't think we'll be doing that Friday. Okay? Uh, and when you're done filling this information out, you're going to come back here and you're going to check this day off. Now, I personally have already read pages 5 through 10 and filled this out, but you're going to need to uh, get your book out and get ready to read, and you're going to have your science notebook or this hard copy there with you, and you're going to fill it out as you read, and you're going to put your answers in your own words. Okay, so let's go to this right here. It says, use the graphic organizer to take notes on the scientists you will learn about on pages 5 through 10. As you read about each scientist, put his name on the line. The names will be in blue letters. Okay, so I'll show you that so you'll be able to recognize it. Let's see. We're starting with page five. Okay, so... The first guy that we read about was on page two, and his name is Imhotep, and he lived about 2,650 years before Jesus was born. 
Okay, then we look on page five, and there's three Greek scientists we're going to talk about. Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. Those are some fun names to say. Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. Okay, and all of these scientists lived before the time of Christ. So these are all people that have, would live in Old Testament times. Okay, but their names are in blue. All right, so we come back here. It says, in the space under the line, write a sentence or two about what made each scientist important. The first one has been done for you. Don't forget to add them to your timeline. No, you're not doing that because we're not doing the timeline right now. We're going to mark this out. Okay. Okay. Also in the space below, right here, it says, write down any questions or thought you, thoughts you have as you do your reading. You might want to include a sentence or two on how to state a good hypothesis. Okay? So, remember I told you as we were reading through there and we found out that Egyptian scientists put moldy bread on cuts? If I'd had this box, I would have written... What made them think to put moldy bread on the cut? Or when we were reading about how they had people chew poppy seeds to relieve pain, I probably would have written, how did they get the idea to have people chew the seeds? How did they know the seeds weren't poisonous? Is it just something that they, part of their trial and error? I don't know. Okay, so right here you would write your questions or thoughts about the reading. And this is really important. You only need to write one or two things, okay? But sometimes we're reading along and it spurs a question. And so this would be really helpful if you write these questions down because then we can talk about these in class. And sometimes I will be able to know the answers to these questions and answer them for you right in class. Or maybe you write a really good question and I'm stumped and I'll say, well, I don't know the answer, but I can go and find out for you. All right, let's go on. That's page 24. Let's go on to page 25. Now, this didn't make a really beautiful um, copy, but in your, in your pretty workbook, let's see, this is page 25. I'll open mine up so you can see all the lines. You can see that there's space for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ancient scientists, and they started with Imhotep, and they wrote down his time period. So you would write the name of the scientist, and you would write his time period, the dates that are in parentheses out beside his name in the reading. Okay, and that'll be important because we are going to do the timeline later. Okay, Imhotep was a well-known doctor in Egypt. He had a lot of medical knowledge and ability to heal. Many people traveled far distances to see him. So that's what they wrote about Imhotep. Okay, I am going to go ahead and show you that I've written down the names of the scientists, starting with Thales, and Anaximander, and Anaximenes. These guys are all on page five in your book, I believe. Pretty sure they're on page five. Yes, they are on page five. Then comes Leucippus. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that. Leucippus. His name is Leucippus. Okay, and how do I know that? Because I looked at the pronunciation spelling for his name. Okay, here's his name in parentheses is the pronunciation spelling. Lucipus, Lucipus. And he was from the early 400s BC. That means 
He was lived about 400 years before Jesus was born. Okay, then we have Democritus. Now, those of you that did social studies with me, when we studied ancient Greece and we wrote in our spiral journal, we wrote about this guy. I might have called him Democritus, but I believe his name is pronounced Democritus. Okay, and then the last guy, we also studied this guy in fifth grade social studies a very famous Greek philosopher named Aristotle. Okay, so those are the people that you're going to write about. And remember, you're going to write one or two sentences to tell me why they are important. Okay, um, on here, I'm okay if you just decide to do bullet points. Okay. You can put your sentence out beside the bullet point, or you can just write a phrase that tells what makes them important, okay? And when you get that information there, you'll be done, and you'll be able to come back and check that off, okay? Don't forget to follow the instructions on your assignment sheet on Google Classroom. Some of you need to make sure that you get your safety contract signed and uploaded to the Google Classroom. You need to make sure that you do all the assignments off of the assignment sheet. Okay, come back to class on Friday with all of this stuff complete because I'm going to take a look at it to see if you did it. And we may actually talk through some of the things that you learned about. All right, if you have any questions, you can call me you can text me, you can, yeah, call me or text me. Those are the two best ways to get in touch with me, okay? All right, that's it. I'll talk to you later.